All right, this is my review of the Malahite, Malahit radio after owning one for, actually I own two, but after having it in my hands for one week. But first I want to show you my bevy of small radios. This is only part of my collection. This is a Sony. This was available in a blister pack in like um, Kmart years ago. And it's a mechanical dial. And inside is really wacky uh, uh, circuitry. It uses l low frequency IFs, okay, which makes this radio super sensitive, super selective, selective on on the AM broadcast band. And this also comes in a clear one that's allowed in the prisons. They make it clear so they can't carry keep ca contraband inside the radio. Uh, it's a pretty good. Uh, pretty good article on it and it, it's a Walkman it's a Sony AM FM no cassette deck uh, in in Kmart when they were getting rid of them uh, they were $9.95 I bought it it's extremely good for AM DX late at night and it does a, a really good job on FM okay this was my first radio that I used to lay in bed uh, when I first got here, a uh, little bit of ins uh, uh, insomnia when I first got here with all the stress. But bought this, played with this, okay? And with this, you can get the Grand Old Opry on 6.50 a.m. out of Nashville at night. And Zoomer Radio at 7.40 out of Canada. Not Boomer Radio, Zoomer Radio. Okay, so that was the radio. I, and as I'm reading around on the internet, somebody mentioned this thing. Now, let me get my glasses so I can read you the number. I did a video once before on this thing. Um, this is a Sand Chan. It's AM FM only. No short wave. And it's a DT-210. DT-210. Okay? And this thing is extremely good on AM broadcast. And I know you're saying, but it's so small. I don't know. All I can tell you... Uh, is it gets really good reception on AM DX at night. Uh, like I said, uh, Nashville, um, Grand Old Opry, Zoomer Radio 740, and then, you know, when you're laying back, you know, it's a digital readout. That's basically why I switched from the other one. Uh, the other one's got a little bit of backlash in the uh, tuning mechanism. This doesn't. This is digital readout. Pretty good with batteries, okay? So this is what I would use for AM broadcasts. See, I'm always looking for a radio that'll do good AM DX, uh, good FM, and shortwave. And I, a couple times I bought real clunkers. And I want to show you the biggest clunker I ever bought before I bought the Mala hit. I took a hit with the Mala hit. Anyway, here it is. Up on Amazon, uh, some guy, a couple old farts, put the review for a different radio in the uh, review section for this one or Amazon took the reviews for a better radio and stuck it in the thing for here and I own this for about a week and then one day I'm like wait a minute where's the BFO the guy talked about wait a minute this thing has limited frequency range okay so what someone did was either they they wanted to review the radio so bad that they put the review in the wrong spot a couple of them and they never mentioned the model number. So I saw this and I'm like, wow, that sounds like a good radio. And being a radio collector, I bought it. It's a piece of shit. Okay? It overloads. It's got a it does have an antenna built in. And it's digital. And it picks up very little noise from itself. But even with this little tiny antenna here, it's about a foot long, it overloads. So you gotta lower the antenna down for like Havana Cube or stronger stations piece of shit okay the uh, band switch wherever the hell it is there it is here it's just the slide thing on the back here okay you know that's gonna go bad eventually but anyway so I know about really good small radios and I know about really bad ones okay and this is a Grundy which Eaton Eaton bought if you pronounce Eaton that way but anyway uh, comes in a nice little case I opened it up. I said, this looks nice. And it's well built. It looks well built, but it's not a great radio. 
So let's get back to the review on this thing. And I took notes on this. First of all, uh, things you won't notice. You buy it. The speaker size. Little tiny like transducer inside the radio. Uh, the sound comes out of the back. Okay, so if you set the radio down, you won't be able to hear the radio. Okay, so the speaker location is bad. The on-off switch should be at the top. Okay, the antenna should be at the top. These little slide rotary controls, they're garbage. Okay. I have it on um, an outside wire. Nothing on right now. Um, I, I was monitoring the channel 19 CB just to get an idea how many people are still using CB on the on the truckers and they still are mostly in Spanish though so the antenna should come out at the top and the knob should be on the side uh, go with the Russian model the copy of the Russian one antenna on the top and controls out here on the side these controls in the software uh, sometimes when you're moving ahead just one digit they jump ahead two digits and then you got to try to go backwards sometimes it takes three clicks to go backwards one it's really by the Russian one with the antenna out of the top uh, the Russian clone the, this this here uh, having the antenna location on the side okay let me let me show you this this thing when you pull it when you lift when you open the antenna up the antenna wants to come loose okay it, it gets loose you got to keep tightening it up it becomes very 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 annoying okay it's obvious whoever designed this didn't know what they were doing also the location of the on off should be up here okay it's uh, on a radio they call it ergonomics okay in other words uh, they thought it through where do you want all the buttons uh, you try to copy other radios, so uh, it's like a car. Um, I always tell the story about uh, Ford one year, put the horn on the end of the signal, the turn signals. You push the horn, and they had a commercial, ask the dealer where the horn is, assholes, okay, ass wipes, ass clowns. Yeah, they, they, they put a fancy steering wheel in the car, and then they realized they couldn't incorporate a horn in the steering wheel so then they put the, st the horn on the end of the turn signal sort of the stuff Microsoft likes to do with their software okay uh, there's basically a radio should be seamless in other words you pick it up and it should operate like another radio and then if you really want to dig into the features they're there for you then you read the instructions but when you turn a radio on and uh, you can't operate it without an instruction booklet uh, it hasn't been well thought out you know the other thing too this is have, this self generates noise so basically you, you want shielded wire from the radio away from the radio out to an antenna in the house somewhere or up in the outside then it works good when you go in an outside antenna you have to change the inside from high Z to 50 uh, 50 ohm antenna okay if you don't do that the radio is going to overload also this radio even if you do that you might have to put up um, uh, the attenuation because you'll hear ghosts you'll be listening you'll be you'll be listening to the ham radio operators and in the background you hear like a radio station playing and it's up and down the entire band that's because this is barn door wide okay and uh, somebody says well it really isn't barn door wide well let's just say it's got an overload problem which causes it to get stations that aren't there. They're called ghosts. Okay. Now the software bug in this one is different than the other one. The other one, you touch the the, uh, the display for frequency with your finger, and it immediately pops up with the, with the direct entry. But as you direct entry, the numbers that they're jumping. Uh, you go to go backwards, it deletes. It's it's a piece of shit. That software. This one, you can't get into. It's very hard to get into the direct entry menu but it's very good with your fingers it doesn't jump it doesn't double glitch so they fixed that 
and these these uh, these touch screens are not really uh, capacitive touch screens they're uh, resistive so this is black anodized so what it wants it wants a path of, of a con conductivity between here and here and this case is is coated so it doesn't work as well and also the circuit board where it slides in the ground does it touch the case really good but certain things that you touch like you want to change from from headphones to speaker the other one bing 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 works this other some of these displays are a bit flaky and i told you this thing ge generates noise so on fm you'll be okay uh cb you'll be okay certain frequencies it doesn't pick itself up so you'll be okay but like i said get the one with the antenna that comes out of the top because this thing keeps it keeps coming loose okay and it, it'll it'll drive you nuts piece of junk and uh the knobs too like i said the other one has the, the the russian one that's the one you want i got two of these these pieces are done uh internal software bugs uh, uh direct entry touch screen i'm reading my notes here self-generating noise so i just wanted to do a review um one of the pluses of this radio is it gets a lot of different frequencies and you need that these days because there's almost nothing on anymore uh let's let's go through the the things you can am broadcast it won't dx uh if you put an outside antenna on it yeah okay you can dx with almost anything but in other words if you want to lay in bed with this thing on your on your chest and you, you can see the display and the whole thing um forget am dxing with it okay you can use it for fm radio you can use it for that now shortwave the really big stations uh, you'll be able to get with just the whip antenna and uh, and a pair of headphones because you're not going to listen to this thing out of that speaker it's it's hard and uh, I have radios small ones with speakers built in and you can understand what the person's actually saying with this it's very tinny uh, maybe if you have younger ears it'll be okay you can put up with it but it's basically a cell phone speaker it's good for voice not for music you know but uh yeah i just want to do a review after after i've owned it long enough but what's happening is there's less and less on shortwave to listen to so with this technically you could get police okay if they're not scrambled in your area uh you can't get tv sound anymore because they've changed the way they do the sound on television so you could get the space station as it goes over your house with the right antenna uh, i don't know if you years ago you could get cell phones uh, the old uh, trunk mount cell phones on cars. I don't think they use them anymore. Uh, I'm trying to think of all the things I used to use. Uh, my R71A and I had the R7. I think I believe it was an R7000. I had both of them. And they did uh, from kilohertz, 150 kilohertz up to gigahertz. And I think there was an adapter uh, for video. It might have been a different, the Kenwood set. I don't, I don't really remember anymore. But just want to do an update uh if you buy one of these you want the antenna out of here you want the knobs on the side uh you'll say well this will fit in my pocket better don't go there okay that's what they want you to think okay that antenna will make you nuts okay uh the knob sticking out here will be a little bit more in your pocket if you do carry it in your pocket and uh there's there's a, there's a lot of room for improvement on this radio and they probably will. I know they're coming out with another model. Uh, but it's basically like if, a, if you got it to CNC. Before um, uh, 3D printing, there were CNC machines. And uh, they come out with this maker slide stuff. And I was producing plans for stuff made it from Home Depot and Lowe's. And uh, the maker slide just made it so much easier to bolt a machine together. And they come out with kits. And uh, they, were, they, were, they, were, they were hitting my numbers. You know like starting out at 600 for a machine but quickly the machine was built too big it was too flexible and then they tried to stiffen it up and the machine got more and more expensive uh they had it belt driven then they changed the z-axis to to work uh to a, a threaded rod uh they kept eventually the machine i won't say the names of them but they got closer and closer to the more expensive machines but they weren't as good as the more expensive machines but they, they, they lured in a lot of people. And this is what this is. This does a lot. Okay? It does a lot of frequencies. If you're just screwing around. And uh, if you're just starting out, 
you know, you might you might play with this for one or two days, and then you say, it's not my thing. You know, shortwave in the old days, uh, you could have an old radio, an old shortwave radio, and you went up and down that band, and it was loaded with countries, loaded, absolutely loaded. You know, you get up early in the morning, you could put on the, um, what was it, uh, 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 Australia, okay, and they played that waltzing Matilda. That was their uh, their th their song that they would play before they would come on. Um, and I, call, I think it was called an intervail tone or intervail tune or intervail music or inner. Anyway, in between uh, programming, they would run the, uh, the music. Uh, uh, I like a, like like bells or a music box playing the song Waltzing Matilda. Radio Switzerland had a music box, and I actually I'm getting the actual music in my head right now. But it was interesting as a kid. You know, you come home from school. And you got those long winters, and you go in your bedroom, and you click it on. Now, my old shortwave radio was a regenerative, and uh, I could flip very quickly uh, switch to WABC, which on Saturday night, WABC out in New York, you, sh you should be able to pick it up almost at any part of the United States. Uh, Cousin Brucey, a disc jockey from back when I was a kid, he's still doing a show on Saturday night, the last I heard. Uh, but anyway, I could switch from my shortwave radio and listen to least WABC. There was no FM on my, my shortwave radios. And back in 1968, FM was just starting to, to, to catch on. And with rock music, they would play the full album. FM caught on. AM was still put, running the uh, uh, two-minute songs. Top of the hour, they played the number one hit and the whole thing. But, yeah, I like I said, I spent many hours on shortwave. And little by little... It disappeared. I got back into it in the 80s, and there was still a lot of countries still broadcasting. Uh, the two bobs from Radio Swiss International, uh, one of them was a Bon Air Relay. It would come in really good. What they would do is they would uh, they would send the program to a, to an island and then rebroadcast from there to the United States. So that, that station, when you listen to it, you could it, it faded in and out, but the audio was go so good, and the program was very original. And they had a guy on there that um, would tell you about what, what other people picked up for the week, uh, different weird shortwave stations. And uh, it was still pretty, it was still humming pretty good. And then, of course, with cell phones, everything's killing, cell phones are killing everything. Start off with, they can do what everything else could do, and people are, hook, are uh, addicted to them. So they won't try anything else, you know. And you got guys doing podcasts instead of shortwave uh, you know, I used to listen to pirates. Uh, they're basically ham operators. They would go off frequency, and then uh, they would go against the country, uh, the United States. They say stuff about stocking up food and stuff like that, and you pick them up. And then some of them would just play wacky songs that weren't allowed on the radio and stuff. I got into that for a while, pirates. And uh, you know, there was a lot to do. You know, they, I showed you my my uh, fax machine, and and there was ready decoders you could buy. I think it was a a, a Camtronics, a Cam, a, yeah, a KA. So anyway, it was a, um, it was a, a, a decoder I bought for fifty bucks at a flea market, and you hooked it up to not a computer, uh, you hooked it up to a monitor uh, that it was like a VTV one hundred, and uh, I built a, a VTV one hundred from scratch in a metal box, and it went over to a little ball monitor that went in a police car, and it was absolutely quiet. It didn't produce any RF noise. And uh, in, that, in those days, I used to shut all the fish tanks down, the lights on the fish tanks, uh, because they used to generate a lot of noise. And then I told you once before on a video I deleted, across the street, I got a liquor store. And the guy put inside the liquor store, all the way around, on the, by, up by the ceiling, all the way around on the wall, he put up uh, um, neon lights, Bud Light and all that stuff, uh, Bush, Bud Light, uh, what are some of the other ones? Oh man. Well, anyway, they generated so much noise I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't use anything anymore. Just FM radio. And then that I sold off a lot of my radios and then now when I moved out here I got back into it. But there's noises out here. Um, like I told you, the um, antenna in the attic it's got an amplifier on it and uh, it, it came with a switching supply, but I've changed that to an analog supply. My fish tank had a switch supply, I changed that. A few other things I know that when I'm done with them to unplug them so they don't interfere. But just wanted to show you to look at this 
this radio, you know, I'm, I'm starting in my mind, I'm thinking about, uh, in, in one of my videos, somebody went in, uh, the people that comment, uh, they just want to talk and they want to tell you what they know and they make a comment and no one video can give you everything without editing, without a lot of work. And I'm not going to do that, but they always, the one thing you don't say, they have to, I have to like educate you, you know, like, I don't know, you know, if you would have spent an hour with me and see all my radios, you know, and I can show you all the things I built and most of the stuff I built, it went in the landfill already. Okay. But like I said, the people that make comments, uh, you should have done this. You should have done, they don't do anything. That's what they do. They bother other people. I think that's it. All right. That's it.